Have you ever wondered why some animals have bizarre and interesting coloration, such as albinos and leucistics? Well, the secret lies within their genes. We can think of genes as coded instruction manuals for life. Genes contain information on how to build every part of an animal's body, from its eyes and legs to the colour pigments within its skin. Through sexual reproduction, animals are created with two sets of these instructions within their genes. One version of a gene comes from the mother and one version from the father. These different versions of genes are called alleles. Sometimes one gene or allele contains areas of missing information or errors. Imagine you are building a flat pack table from your favourite Swedish furniture manufacturer and you are carefully following the instructions. If part of those instructions are missing, you won't know how to build that part of the table. Colour morphs occur when animals are missing parts of their instructions, their genetic coding. Fortunately, nature solves this by giving them two sets of instructions, one from each parent. So if one set of instructions is missing information, they simply need to use the other set. In the following example, we will look at one particular gene. The gene which contains information on how to produce melanin, the dark pigment within skin. In this example, we have a normal wild coloured great crested newt. It has two normal copies of the melanin producing gene. We will represent these alleles with the capital letter M. We then have an albino great crested newt. It has two copies of defective melanin producing genes. We'll represent these with lowercase m's. So what would happen if we were to breed these two animals together? Let's take a look. The animal which only has normal copies of the melanin producing gene is only able to pass on a normal copy to its offspring. And as the albino animal only has defective copies of the melanin producing gene, again, that is the only kind of gene it is able to pass on to its offspring. So this means that the only possible combination of melanin producing genes that these offspring can have is one normal melanin producing gene and one defective version of the melanin producing gene. This means that all offspring from this particular mating would be carriers of the albino condition. When an animal has two different copies of a gene, we call this heterozygous, hetero meaning different, or het for short. And we could say that both parents are homozygous. One is a normal homozygous animal and the other is a homozygous albino. Homozygous means the same. So what will these heterozygous albino animals look like? Since they only need one copy of the fully functional melanin producing gene to produce melanin, they will look completely normal. In this second scenario, we have two heterozygous albino animals. We can calculate the different possibilities for the offspring simply by drawing lines to join up the different combinations of genes. Two out of the four possible combinations give us heterozygous albinos, just like the parents. One of the combinations has two normal copies of the gene, so this animal will not carry the gene for albinism. The final combination is to have two defective copies of the melanin producing gene. So this animal will be a visual albino. And so of the four possible combinations, we can see that het albino occurs twice. This means that statistically 50% of the offspring are likely to be het albinos. One quarter will be visual albinos and one quarter will not carry the albino gene at all. Of course, we cannot tell the difference between the normal animals and the het albinos because their visual appearance is the same. Because in this example, het albino occurs with double the frequency that normal animals occur, we can calculate that two thirds of the normal looking animals are likely to be het albinos. Two thirds as a percentage is 66%. So these animals are sometimes referred to as 66% het. This just means that they have a 66% chance of carrying the albino gene. If we're breeding these animals and we don't want to produce any normals, we can do this by breeding one het albino to one visual albino or homozygous albino. 
This will give us a 50-50 split of het albinos and visual albinos. In this pairing, no normal animals are produced, so we can say with 100% certainty that all visually normal animals are heterozygous albino. This is sometimes referred to as 100% het. These same rules apply to most basic colour morphs, whether they be melanistic, melanoid, leucistic, flavistic or albino. The rule applies as long as the colour morph is classed as recessive. Recessive colour morphs are where it doesn't matter if information is missing from one set of instructions. Since the animal has a second set of instructions with no missing parts or errors, it simply follows this instead. But in dominant colour morphs, the animal develops favouring the faulty instruction manual. It disregards the good copy which is free from errors. Dominant colour morphs are more rare, but they do exist in animals such as this pinstripe ball python. Let's take a quick look at their genetics. On the left we have a ball python with a normal pattern. We will represent this gene with a capital letter P. On the right we have a pinstripe ball python. Now we know that it must have at least one defective pattern gene, but what about the other gene? If the animal has unknown parents, the best way to work out its genetics is by doing a test breeding. If the pinstripe only has one defective gene and one normal gene, then half of the offspring will be pinstripes and half will be normal. If the parent pinstripe carries two pinstripe genes, then all of the offspring will be pinstripes. Since these two animals are identical in appearance, we say that they have the same phenotype. A phenotype is a set of observable characteristics that an animal has. Although they look the same, their genetics are different. This is what we call their genotype. Genotype refers to the animal's genes, rather than just what we can tell by simply looking at the animal. There is one final type of gene that we will look at, and this is called incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance is where one defective gene has an effect on appearance, but two copies of the defective gene have a different effect on appearance. A good example of incomplete dominance in herps is the condor hognose snake. So let's take a look at their genetics. It doesn't really matter what letter we use to represent the gene, but as this is another pattern morph, let's use the letter P again. The normal wild type animal has two capital letter P's. The morph with two defective versions of this gene is known as the super condor. It has virtually no pattern at all. If we were to breed these two animals together, we get the condor. This is the morph with one normal version of the pattern gene and one defective version. The word super is often used in the reptile keeping community to describe a morph that has two copies of an incomplete dominant gene. Finally, we will look at what happens when we breed two different colour morphs together. We will refer back to our albino great crested newt, which we know has two copies of defective melanin producing genes. The other animal that we will look at is a melanoid great crested newt. It has two defective copies of iridophore producing genes. Iridophores are the shiny golden pigments that both the wild type and the albino great crested newt have in their skin. The absence of melanin in the albino is what makes these iridophores stand out and gives it its golden coloration. So what will happen if we breed these two colours together? Well we need to look at the other genes that the animals are carrying. As well as two defective melanin producing genes, the albino also has two fully functional iridophore producing genes. And the melanoid animal, as well as having two defective iridophore producing genes, it also has two fully functional melanin producing genes. Since the offspring will all inherit one normal melanin producing gene and one normal iridophore producing gene, they will be able to develop their completely normal coloration. But they will be heterozygous both for albino and melanoid. 
Animals which are het for two different colour morphs are often referred to as double hets. Although they look completely normal, the fun really starts when we begin to breed these double hets together. This pairing would give us offspring with a normal phenotype, albino phenotype, melanoid phenotype, and also animals that are both a combination of albino and melanoid. This pairing has probably never been done before with crested newts, but we can get a good idea what the offspring may look like because the combination of melanoid and albino does occur in another salamander species, the axolotl. Sometimes several different colour morphs are combined in species such as the ball python. These complex morphs follow the same rules of inheritance that we have discussed here, but they go beyond the scope of this video. If you found this video useful, the best way that you can show your support is by subscribing to the channel now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.